Well, now I'm taking a little bit of a break from traveling and my trailer's in dry dock so I can do some minor repairs and alterations and stuff like that. Try out some new ideas. And of course, the first thing I want to do is get rid of this old cooler. And that frees up a lot of space. Now my new refrigerator is still underneath the bed. And I actually really like it under the bed. But reality is it's going to be in the way if I want to go stealth and stuff like that. So I think the, the new refrigerator is going to go back in that uh, this space here. Maybe I'll slide it out and uh, I've probably got some extra space I can use for a shelf or something like that. So um, I'm going to redesign that. As far as the cooler goes, it would be really good. I hate spending money on something and throwing it out. Maybe I can repurpose it somehow, like uh, take the cooling unit out and use it for something else. Maybe an air conditioner? Who knows? But before modifying the cabinet, I wanted to go back to another issue I discussed before in Nevada, when I had rain leaking through a window during a storm. My Band-Aid solution while traveling was to put weather stripping on the inside of the frame. This did stop the moisture from coming inside, but could potentially trap the water in the wall. Well, back home, I decided to open up the other side window and see if there's a better way to resolve this issue. I had received some ideas from some of my viewers as well. Well, as I kind of suspected, you cannot merely pop out a window on an A-liner. It is glued in place. It's got caulking on the inside of the outside frame. But that's not the only thing I found. Well, it looks like I got a little bad news. I've got rot underneath the sill. It's definitely separating. And if you trace it back up that middle column, there's actually a hole where the water comes through. That's definitely not good. From the outside, it was pretty obvious where the water had entered the trailer. So what the problem is, is the rubber weather stripping has shrunk over time and it's left a gap in the top. Now, it would be great if I could just replace the rubber weather stripping, but chances of finding that exact model or type are pretty slim and I know A-Liner is not going to provide it for me. So that's why I'm going to plan B which is some RTV sealant. And this is a black silicone you can get at most auto supply places. And so what I want to do is fill in that gap with the sealant. In order to do that, I've got a little bit of saran wrap and I'm just going to put that into the corner, slide the window across, because this is one of the windows that actually slide open, so that the uh, caulking doesn't actually glue itself to the window. I'll put that in, let it harden, and then I can test it out. It was a great theory, but in practice the saran wrap proved inadequate. So instead of saran wrap, I made a barrier with cheap plastic from packaging. I coated one side with Vaseline to both help guide it in place and to prevent the caulking from adhering to the plastic barrier. Next I found a little gap in the weather stripping and slid the barrier up into place. Well, just a tip, the black sealant is a real mess, so if you don't want to get it all over your fingers, wear gloves. Well, it's been curing for a few days, and it's actually raining right now, so it's a perfect time to try this out. So I'll remove the plastic, and just to make sure, I'll go inside and try the window, make sure it hasn't sealed itself to the glass. Seems to slide perfect. Now let's just see if it's waterproof. Well, not the prettiest job I did, 
It at least seemed to be tough and held well. The other problem was what to do with that rot. Because of the styrofoam, I couldn't use a solvent, so epoxy seemed a good choice. Using strips of plastic, I forced the epoxy into the gaps between the styrofoam and the inner lining. I tried to pack it in as deep as I could to make up for the disintegrated wood. Before the glue set, I used a 2x4 to hold the side firmly in place for a straight edge. Well that hardened up really good. Nice and hard, uh, seals really good. Still a little soft down here, but I think uh, I could have done better if I used 24 hour epoxy. It would have seeped down farther in, but I only used five minute, but I think I can live with that. So the next step is just seeing uh, if we have a good seal. Right on cue came an Alberta thunderstorm, complete with hail, of course. So to test out the seal, just going to run some bathroom tissue underneath and then I'll uh, use the garden hose and we'll see if there's any leaks. Okay, make sure my hands are dry. Completely dry. We have a seal. That means I don't have to do anything on the inside. Just uh, sealing up the rubber on the outside and uh, that's all I need to do. So I can put the frame back up we're all ready to roll. So now back to the kitchen cabinet. In Arizona I replaced my large inefficient cooler with a small energy efficient refrigerator but I hadn't found a place to put it. Well there's no issue with fitting this uh, refrigerator in the hole. It's just a matter of how to access it. One idea I have is to use appliance rollers. Now I can just put these underneath and slide it back and forth. I don't think this is going to be permanent, so I'm not going to make a permanent solution, just a temporary one. These things are really cheap, you know, like about $15 for the metal one. And there's also a plastic one, which is like $8 or $10. And what I can do with the plastic one actually is just use these wheels on the sides so that it'll have support going out and so it won't rock back and forth. I can use these wheels. I'm going to try that. It's a temporary solution and not only that, I can attach these with Velcro or whatever I want. So if I want to use this in the uh, in the tow vehicle or whatever, I'm not stuck with these rollers all the time. The first thing I did was remove some of the lower trim from the cabinet. That would give the rollers a clear path across the floor. Next, I cut up some 1x2s for use with the side guides. I rounded one side of each strip where the fridge slides in. I then marked where the rollers would be fastened. It's pretty easy to remove the rollers with just a screwdriver. I used wood screws the same diameter as the holes to fasten the rollers in place. 
Make sure you don't over tighten them because they do have to move freely. And here's the side rails in place inside the cabinet. To attach the appliance rollers, I first put strips of Velcro on top of each assembly. I then fastened the mating Velcro strips on the pieces below, then peeled back the protective coating. Since I couldn't turn the fridge upside down due to its coolant, I had to just tilt the fridge up and then align the rollers by sight. When correct, I lowered the fridge on top. One design issue I had with the fridge is where the cord was located. Because I wanted the vents and the display in the front, I ended up using a glue gun to fasten the electrical cord to the back. I also used tie downs to keep the rest of the cord out of the way. Well now I've got all the pieces put together, I can show you how it works. So the, uh, the refrigerator's plugged in, got a little slack in the cord so it can go back and forth. Put it in, just slides in like that. To uh, keep it from moving in transportation, I've got a little bar I made. The bar just goes in there, keeps it from uh, going back and forth. Now, I wouldn't leave this space like this because I could use it for something else. So what I did is I made a drawer. And this is all recycled materials, just wood I had lying around. Even the handle is a piece of elm that I cut down in somebody's backyard and just put a groove in there. Uh, kept the bark on there just because I thought it looked cool. Put that in there. There's the drawer. Little uh, barrel bolt lock. Lock the drawer in place as well. And to use, bring it out. Open it up. That's it. So there you have it. I've got my new little refrigerator tucked out of the way. I've got a new drawer. I can put my pots and pans in. I know it wasn't a super exciting video, but anybody that's trying to save a little bit of space on a small trailer, every little bit helps. But I hope you did enjoy this, and uh, always appreciate the thumbs up, and check back, I've got more ideas coming up as well. And as my little sparrow buddy says, please subscribe.